is going on guys eagle aquatics back here and recently i've been putting up a bunch of polls like once a week on the community on youtube uh, asking what you guys want to see care guides on or uh, future videos and overwhelmingly you guys chose to to want to see a care guide on hammer coral uh over everything else it won like 70 percent to like 25 it's, it's nuts so obviously you guys really want to see a care guide and my opinions on keeping hammer coral in a reef tank now personally euphelia corals are one of my favorite corals ever to keep as you guys know the last video you guys all wanted to see was on torch corals which is another euphelia awesome coral but hammer corals is really where it's at for me i love hammer corals they're probably my favorite out of all the euphelia being like frog spawn torches hammers Hammer corals are just the coolest, in my opinion. I got a bunch of different types. Right now you're looking at my splatter hammer. This is a uh, purple and splatter green splatter hammer. Uh, I got a gold right next to it, and then I got a green with purple tip um, hammer coral there, along with like what I like to call a reverse splatter hammer. You will see that uh, coming up one, once I put the camera towards it. So I've been keeping these corals. This is one of my first corals that I ever kept in a reef tank, which in my opinion, these are good beginner corals because I think they're more forgiving to water qualities than frog spawn or torch corals, at least in my experience. I've found when back, back in the bio cube days when I had the bio cube, the hammer coral was the most hardy coral in my tank. Uh, I lost, obviously I didn't know too much. So, I lost torch corals before I lost hammers, you know, torch corals would die. I was never able to keep those guys, but I could always keep a hammer coral, you know. They, they seem to be more forgiving uh, to the beginner aquarist than some other species. Uh, so, as I said, I've been keeping these guys for years. They've been all my tanks. Uh, the, the green with purple tip one actually happens to be the oldest one. This used to be a big colony, but as I said, it died a couple years ago and this was the last head on it. So I've had that guy for a long time, and I've had that splatter hammer for like ever. I got it from a friend actually, and it, it just exploded with growth in this tank. But uh, more about torch corals, they come, they're just an insane living coral. You can get some really high end species like the gold hammers, and even the splatter hammers are pretty expensive. Uh, but these are mesmerizing coral. They always flow in the current. They come in some completely insane colors. Here's that reverse splatter hammer I was talking about. It's got like splatter like branches, but it has purple tips. It's pretty cool, pretty unique. I, that's why I picked that one up. But you can get these guys for anywhere from like a standard like purple or all green to a splatter hammer, a pure gold hammer coral, which is completely insane in the reverse. There's so many different colors of these corals. Obviously, when they get more intense, they get more expensive. That's the thing. Um, but now hammer corals, they come in two different growth types. They come either branching, which is a lot easier to keep and grows a lot faster, or they come in a wall. Um, like a, they grow in like a wall pattern where it's just one big pile. That's the thing. Those guys are a little tricky because if one side of that is bumped or starts to die or seed, usually the whole colony or the whole polyp is wiped out. Where the branching, you know, if a part's getting shaded or stung by another coral, you, you, that coral, that polyp will die, but you'll still have the rest of the colony. And in my opinion, I believe that branching coral, branching hammer corals grow a ton faster and they could grow very, very fast. So for the beginner to advance the corals, I would recommend the branching variant of hammer coral rather than the wall or single polyp hammer coral. So placement, in my opinion on these guys, you can place them in the sand on the bottom if you get like kind of a globe pattern one or uh, one growing in the shape of like a circle, like that gold hammer, you can probably place that in the sand bed and it'll do just fine. Uh, but if it's kind of offset or kind of oddly shaped, then put it in the middle level of the tank. I prefer my hammer corals on rocks and kind of like grouped together. Like I have this big rock right here, big piece of county. All these hammer corals and frog spawns are glued to this rock because eventually I want to have this be one giant mass of just different colored hammer corals and frog spawns just growing into each other. I think it would look completely insane 
So my personal preference, I like placing them more towards the middle of the tank um, so, and grouping them together. I, I'd rather not place them on the bottom. I don't want fish kicking sand up on them or anything. They're too expensive to lose. So I, I elevate them in the rocks and I think they look awesome in the rocks. Um, so current with these guys, water flow, then I would say lower to medium flow. I have these guys in kind of like an alternative flow. Like I have my power, I have two hydrocorallias uh, on the timer. So when one shuts off, the other one goes on and vice versa. So these guys hit, get hit with pretty wild current every minute. And then when the other one flips on, it's very low. So I have these guys in alternative, but medium flow, in my opinion, works. So you could, you want to see their pouts moving in the current. If you don't see them moving, they're not benefiting from anything. They need some water moving. You don't want to just place them in stagnant water. They got to clear themselves of the slime that's on them, and be able to get particles out of the air. It's just better to keep them in a uh, moderate current. Don't place them in high current. They will start to recede. If they're getting blasted constantly, they will not like that and they might die. I'm just talking medium to lower current. But you gotta have their polyps moving. That's a must. So lighting on these corals. Most light works. I would say they're a moderate light coral to even higher light. I have vents under some pre, I would say more on the higher end of the lighting spectrum. I have them under my big uh, Zet Light 6800 uh, Q-Maven. They're getting a fair amount of light, that's for sure. Um, that thing puts out a lot of light. I've grown like Montipora, some SPS coral underneath there, and these guys do just fine. So I would say they do like a fair amount of light. So make sure you have some good LEDs or a good set of T5s because these guys do like their lights because they have so many pops and they're so big that they just need to absorb so much light and they need a good light source. So definitely have a good light for these guys to have. I don't think they would thrive under low light, like some cheap LEDs, cheap marine LEDs. I wouldn't go with that. They might open, but they probably wouldn't show good colors and probably wouldn't grow that fast, uh, in my opinion at least. Now, keeping these guys over the years, in this tank especially, I have seen the growth rate. These can be some of the fastest growing corals you possibly have. I even compare them, call me crazy, but I even compare their growth rate under the right conditions as fast as SPS corals, like no joke. That splatter and that frog spawn, even that gold torch right there, grow like crazy. It's nuts. They, I can look at night and I see new heads coming in all over the place on these things. The key, it's a must. If you want a successful reef tank, the key is low nutrients and you have to dose. Low nutrients meaning this tank, my tank, I have phosphates undetectable um, and nitrates around 10 to 15. I know it's a little on the higher end of nitrates, but these guys do like a little bit of nitrous in the water. I'm still working on that, but they seem to love it. So the key is low nutrients and you have to dose. If you dose your tank with these guys, they will calcify like crazy, grow like crazy. I keep my alkalinity 9.4, uh, calcium 450, and magnesium 1380 to 1400 around there. And these guys do excellent, excellent. They grow like crazy. But if you want these guys to grow fast, you gotta get those nutrients down and you gotta start dosing, that's for sure. Put them under some better lights too. And these guys will grow like nothing like crazy um, now in the past years I used to keep my tanks at higher nutrient levels I've noticed these guys do not grow nearly as fast uh, with higher nutrients but they will tolerate them that's for sure they will open up and they will look really good they just won't grow as fast I've kept phosphates at like 0.25 um, and nitrates around 20 25 in the past and these guys will tolerate it. They don't die. They do open. I wouldn't, I would never recommend having a reef tank with that high of nutrients, but they definitely will tolerate it and they are very forgiving. That's the thing with these guys. More forgiving than torch corals. Now, with another big pile of SPS or LPS coral like these guys, they have the ability to be fed. So 
They will, of course, benefit if you want to squirt them like mice and shrimp every now and then, or use like that recroids or something, squirt it on them. It's pretty cool with these guys because when they when the food touches the polyps, a ton of slime, they create a ton of slime and then the food, you could see it come off the artic or their tentacles in a big slime patch around them and then they'll suck it in their mouth. It's pretty crazy. Uh, really cool core to feed. I wouldn't feed them all the time. I don't really feed mine. Maybe every couple of weeks. But when I do, it's really cool to watch. Um, so as I said before, this garden of frog spawn and hammer coral that I have on this big pecanic rock, they can touch each other. Frog spawn and hammer corals can touch each other and grow into each other. The only affiliate you can't mix with these guys is torch corals. Torch corals will sting and hammer corals will sting them. There will be warfare between those guys. Don't mix torch corals, but you can definitely have a garden full of, diff a garden full of different hammer corals and different frog spawns growing into each other. They will not bother. These, this splatter hammer and this purple tip frog spawn right here are growing crazy into each other. They don't care. That's the thing. Uh, these corals will sting, can and will sting other corals, that's for sure. They have a potent sting to other ones, like other LPS and SPS corals, so don't put them close. Uh, trim them down if they're getting too big. They're not hard to frag. Uh, just trim them down, keep them, keep them from stinging other corals, and other corals sting them. And uh, lastly, I would say buying. These guys, they can be a little pricey, especially the gold torches and the splatters, but the regular ones, like the green purple tips or like all green, all purple, you can get them for pretty cheap. I would say the cheapest you're probably gonna find these guys is probably a frag, $25, $30. Um, but a bigger piece, like the ones you see in this tank, they're probably gonna run you around 60, 80 bucks, somewhere around there. But it's a good investment. If you get your water quality right, you, these guys will grow crazy in the I mean, your investment will definitely pay off in the long run once you start fragging these guys. But they can be pricey. They're really, really easy to find. You can find hammer corals pretty much anywhere. You can, anywhere online too, all different colors. Any color you want, uh, you could get. Um, and they're very common, really, really awesome coral to have. Uh, so yeah, guys, that was my opinion and my personal uh, opinionated care for these hammer corals, these species. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. I'm gonna be posting more polls on YouTube, maybe once a week or once every other week, asking what care guys or videos you guys wanna see at. So make sure you vote on those and check them out. If you don't see something I post as a choice, definitely leave a comment. I will make a video on that. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Definitely go out and buy yourself a hammer coral and get those water parameters under control. And uh, Oh, be sure to follow me on Instagram also at Eagle Aquatics. Really simple, get that app. Type in Eagle Aquatics, no space, no caps, no anything. Boom, follow. Doesn't take too much. Post on there constantly. Uh, and I'll see you guys next time.